Fantastic Four. More like fan trash tick for am I right? Huh? Am I right? Spoilers. So I did this video on Robocop 3 and I talked about why I think it's better than people gave it credit for. And it got me thinking, what other movies are out there that most people say is rubbish, but is actually a secret gem? And I thought, what about Fantastic Four? So I rewatched it and boy, let me tell you, I was actually quite surprised. It's way worse than I remember. This movie is absolute garbage. Let's talk about it. So the Fantastic Four starts off with young Reed Richards not paying attention in science class because he's supposed to be a genius with an intellect so far beyond even his own teacher that he just does his own thing. Well, riddle me this, Batman. If Reed Richards is so smart, how come he doesn't even know if you write with a pencil, you have to keep your hand off the page to avoid smudging? Furthermore, if Reed Richards is so smart, why is he not actually writing anything in that book? That is scribble. That is actually just scribble. You see how he's writing near the middle of the page and then all of a sudden he's writing at the top? Scribble. And who holds a pencil like this? How's this boy named Reed when he can't even write? Man's a dickhead fam. Anyway, we also get introduced to Ben Grimm. He sits at the back of the class because, you know, that's where the dumb kids sit. Hey, didn't you used to sit at the back of the class? Shut up. Anyway, now after this, we find out that Ben gets smacked around by his older brother, and Reed is a thief that steals from small family-run businesses. The worst kind of thief. Well, maybe not the worst, but, you know, still pretty bad. Ben helps Reed get a converter for his teleporter thingy, and Reed blows out the electricity in his entire neighborhood. And we're supposed to believe this guy's a genius. Man's a dickhead fam. But credit where credit's due for using multiple N64s, that was a nice touch. But I'm guessing he didn't bother with the N64 expansion pack. Might have given him the more power oh, 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 that he needed. Now here's the thing, Ben and Reed become friends for the next seven years, but it's not really clear why. They seemingly didn't have much contacts before, Reed is a delusional thief, Ben doesn't understand Reed's experiments. Seven years later, Ben still doesn't understand Reed's experiments, so what have they been doing for seven years? Reed's just telling Ben what to do without ever explaining himself? Because that doesn't sound like a friendship. That sounds like bullying to me. Which means Ben gets bullied physically by his brother, then bullied mentally by Reed. After that, he went on a journey of self-discovery and became Billy Elliot. So now we get introduced to Dr. Franklin Storm and his daughter Sue Storm, and no one mentions the obvious because in 2015, we didn't see race, we just saw people. Mm-hmm. Things we don't really get introduced to them, they just walked up to a couple of high school kids and started divulging government secrets in a place where anyone can hear them. A minute later he's offering Reed a full scholarship and still hasn't actually said his name yet. By the way, Dr. Franklin offered Reed the scholarship, not Ben, and even if he was offering to Ben as well, Ben had no intention of going. Yet, on the way to the Batsler Corporation, Ben is carrying the majority of the luggage because Ben is being bullied by Reed and this movie does not address it. Anyway, next we find out Reed is also a sex offender in the making, by the way, he keeps talking to Sue in the library when she's trying to study and clearly has no interest in a conversation with him. Now, I don't know how things are done in America, maybe just walk up to women and grab them by the pussy, but I think in most parts of the world, having headphones in is pretty much a universal sign for do not disturb. Listen, Kevin, no amount of social awkwardness excuses that, okay? At this point, it really just glorifying harassing women in open spaces. So now we finally get something that resembles a plot. Turns out the Baxter Corporation, and in particular Dr. Franklin, are trying to save the world by finding new energy sources and to answer questions they don't yet know to ask. Like, why did anyone agree to do this movie? And in order to do this, they think interdimensional space travel is the way forward. So they pluck out some high school kids and make them work day and night. Now it's not clear if these kids are actually getting paid, but probably not since it's technically a school and we do find out later that they weren't even going to get any credit for it so yeah they're abusing children and dr franklin is the worst because he's exploiting his own daughter victor von doom had already set fire to a previous lab but dr franklin wanted him on the team so badly that when he realizes that doom would only join the team if sue was going to be there man didn't hesitate to pimp out his own child man's willing to put the health and well-being of his own kids at risk for something that has an extremely high chance of failing but now about 22 minutes into the movie we finally get Michael B. Jordan, the final four of the Fantastic Four, the fourth lead actor and the only one that doesn't have Fantastic Four in his known four section on IMDb, yet he only comes into the story after Reed stole, bullied and sexually harassed, after Ben got bullied by his family and best friend and almost got eaten by Captain America. And if you got that reference, 
Put it in the comments. After Suga ignored, victimized, and exploited. After they laid out the plot for the movie. After they set out the antithesis for the movie. After Dr. Franklin says there are no greater minds than the ones in this room. After Dr. Franklin gives a motivational speech and sets out the plan of action. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. This man's voice is so deep. I'm pretty sure if you watch this movie in the cinema, every time he spoke, you ejaculated. After all that, then they introduced Johnny Storm by having him crash a car on a street race and Daddy Franklin using that as a way of forcing him to join the team because apparently he can build anything even with a broken arm which won't be broken in the next few cuts. So if he's so important to the success of the project then why are they bringing him in literally after they set up the entire movie? Gee, I wonder. So anyway, we get a montage, they do computer stuff, building stuff, get takeaway, Reed stares at Sue, Reed sends a selfie to Ben to show how good his life is while Ben still lives in a junkyard. They finally address Sue being Dr. Franklin's daughter by adoption, which might explain why Franklin doesn't really care for her safety because, you know, he's rich and he could just go ahead and get a new daughter if this one breaks. But it's also at this moment Reed reveals he's a narcissist by making Sue's adoption all about him, saying he wished he was adopted because his parents don't understand him. This dude blew out the electricity in his whole neighborhood as a kid, and his parents still let him pursue his crazy science experiments and now he has the audacity to say I wish I had different parents. Men's a dickhead fam! They finally finish the interdimensional space travel machine and test it out on monkeys because why not add animal cruelty at this point? It works and the not so fantastic four minus Ben plus Doctor Doom all want to go next but Bossman wants to hand it over to Nessa. Now this upsets him and they get drunk because why not add underage drinking at this point? They whine about how they're gonna die penniless and alone so Reed convinces them they should just fire up the machine and go to another dimension with no supervision nor any prior fitness or g-force training and while loaded with alcohol and we're supposed to believe this guy's a genius? Man's a dickhead fam! Now Sue was not there when they decided this, so naturally they just can't go without Ben. Wait, hold on a sec. Doctor Doom just gave a speech about how people who invent things never get any recognition. Not actually true, by the way, but whatever. Now, didn't Sue have a big input to the success of this thing? Plus, the only reason he's even there so he can try his luck with her. And Reed has been creepily obsessed with Sue ever since he got there. And Johnny? Dude, that's your sister! How did she get passed on for some guy that only Reed knows and apparently hasn't been doing anything for the past 35 minutes? So, of course, Ben is like, sure, let me go to another dimension with the guy who's been bullying me my whole life. Plus a guy who set fires for a lab and a guy who's only there because he crashed his car. But anyway, they go to the other dimension and everything goes well, until it doesn't. They all climb down the cliff to check out the energy source, well, all except Johnny because, you know. Reed and Victor mess around with the toxic ooze way too much and it erupts so they start running and Doom falls when they're trying to climb back up. They leave him behind because why not add attempted manslaughter by reckless endangerment at this point? They get back in a spaceship and Sue's on the other end which is convenient because now they can really use her help. Ben gets hit with a rock, Johnny gets set on fire, Reed I think gets kicked in the face by a Dalsim and Sue gets hit with an energy blast on their re-entry and thus the not so fantastic four is born. Reed Richards is elastic, Sue can fade from sight, Johnny is the human torch and the government find out about their new superpowers and instead of notifying their parents, expelling them from the school and pressing criminal charges, they put them in a secret base, run experiments and make them join the army, which is probably the single most realistic thing in this whole movie. What they don't answer, however, is how exactly did they manage to move Johnny to the base while he was on fire without killing anyone? Or maybe they didn't. I'm saying he probably killed a bunch of people along the way, you know, probably. Reed escapes and tries to get Ben but doesn't really try that hard because he doesn't really care. He just leaves his friends behind to become hired killers for the government. Even though they're all in that situation directly because of Reed, he just runs away from his responsibilities. Man's a dickhead firm! Now it's a year later and Dr. Franklin asks Sue to find Reed because it took him a whole year to remember his daughter's studies patterns. And it's pretty clear by now that Reed has no intention of coming back like he fake promised Ben that he would. But credit where credit's due, Reed does admit he's a terrible person but too a little too late really. Now the government want to go back to the other dimension to suck out all its energy to create more super soldiers and control Earth. Dr. Franklin and Sue want to go back because they think they can cure themselves and need Reed's help to finish the machine. Ben stopped caring and legit has no purpose in the movie right now. Johnny doesn't really want to go back because, well, to be fair, he has got to call his power. 
and nobody, not a single anybody, wants to check on Victor. Now I know they all thought Victor was dead, but then with that and knowing what happened on the first trip to Outer World, why didn't they have better safety measures in place for the return? They legit sent some scientists over there with the exact same equipment. A whole year later, they didn't improve a thing? Well anyway, surprise, surprise, Doctor Doom isn't dead. What is surprising though is that Doctor Doom had all that planet to himself, roaming anywhere as he pleased, and then a whole year later when they come back, they just happen to go to the same spot that he just happened to be in. So they bring him back, but Doctor Doom has his own powers and is pissed that they're gonna try and ruin his new home. So he kills a bunch of people with telekinesis, just walks through the hallway and you see bodies drop in and anyway, Doctor Doom kills Franklin because the movie needed a reason for Johnny to be involved. Now Doctor Doom wants to destroy Earth because he couldn't get a date with Sue. I mean, he actually gave another reason, but you know, this is probably the real reason. So the not so fantastic four go back to Dimension X to stop him and to avenge Dr. Franklin. And by the way, how did they know they can breathe in the other dimension? I mean, this movie could have been cut short had they just turned up and suffocated without their helmets. Actually, come to think of it, that might be a more interesting story. They all try individually to stop Doctor Doom, but he's too powerful. So Reed says, let our powers combine. They defeat the evil Doctor Doom, who really just wanted to be left alone after they abandoned him. Had they not gone back, none of this would have happened. Matter of fact, had they not gone in the first place and let NASA handle it like they were supposed to, none of this would have happened. But there's zero repercussions for their actions. All the damaged, death and destroyed lives that were caused as a result of Reed's stupidity, nobody cares. Instead, they get rewarded with their own research center with no government interference and they don't even actually say what they're going to be researching. So I think the moral of the story is people who bully, harass and endanger other people's lives get everything they wanted. So before we get into this movie, if, and I realize that's a pretty big if, but if you like Fantastic Four, you might want to check out these movies. In fact, let me know your favorite terrible movie that's based on a comic book. So this is the biggest thing that I got from this movie. Their powers are linked to their personalities. Reed is elastic because to believe this guy's intelligent involves a complete stretch of logic. Or I think what the film wants you to believe is that he wants to impact the world, which is such a mammoth task that one has to go beyond themselves to achieve it. But as what is demonstrated by Reed in the movie, man's a dickhead. Firm. Ben is rocks because he doesn't go anywhere. This man has zero character development, zero personal growth, just nothing. Now the thing is strong, tough, can pretty much do anything he wants, yet he takes orders from boss man to go kill 40 something people over a promise that he can be fixed. Either he's too dumb to realize that it's not in boss man's interest to have him cured, or his self esteem is too low to just walk away. I'm guessing probably the latter. Ben was bullied by his brother, bullied by Reed, which destroyed his confidence. So even with that newfound strength, he's ripe to be taken advantage of. And by the end of the movie, Ben seems to have forgiven Reed for everything, but at no point does he have any real reconciliation. So has he really forgiven Reed? Or is he still exhibiting a weakness of not being able to walk away from toxic people? I think the fact that Ben used the phrase, it's clobbering time, which is what his brother would say right before he would hit him, shows that he's dealing with a lot of internalized self-doubt. And the movie does not to address it. Johnny is fire because he's black and I guess he's supposed to be an angry hothead but they only kind of mention it and never really display it so the thing is though as of the four Fantastic Fours Michael B. Jordan is the only one that's worked with director Josh Trank before this and yet he still has the most shallow character in the movie like Johnny Storm is so shallow they should have called him the human frying pan and Sue is invisible because well she is invisible. She's only really noticed when they need her. Even Reed and Doom, who spend a large part of the screen time mentally jerking off, never actually ask her out on a date. Sue is a white girl adopted into a black family. There's no hiding that. She knows where she's from, but it's not clear if she knows anything about her original family. Now, Sue doesn't talk much, pretty much keeps herself to herself. And my guess is that's partly because she struggles with her own identity and belonging. The whole thing about looking for patterns in everything is perhaps a way of trying to find out more about herself and her own origins. And maybe the real reason Reed and Doom never actually ask her out is because as much as it's obvious that they're attracted to her, their energies are not in line. Reed is an intellectual bully but can't do that with Sue because she's too smart. Doom is a verbal bully but can't do that with Sue because she doesn't engage in conversation that much. And I'm pretty sure Doom is supposed to be way older than all of them so why is this pervert even interested in teenagers? A few more years and that's straight up Shane Dawson territory. Now when this movie was released I remember hearing that the director had all kinds of issues with the studio with creative ideas and wanting to do this, not being able to do this and interference from this, that and the other and everything. So perhaps, just perhaps, had the studio let Josh Trank make the movie that he wanted, we could have got something with a lot more depth to it. Or I don't know, maybe he did actually want to make a movie that's an hour 39 minutes of unintentional bigotry. But anyway, that's what I think of Fantastic Four. What do you think? Fantastic or Fantastic? 
Let me know down below and while you're there be sure to like, subscribe and drop a suggestion if you don't mind.